everything we taught is wrong. The first thing I want to say on this is when you go through an education system, education is not about teaching you something. It, well, it's about process. It's about listening. It's about conformity. It's not about learning. It's not about thought processes. It's not about being a better person. A lot of the stuff is pushed as being a better person. Yet, the lack of engagement in a lot of schools tells me it's not about being a better person whatsoever. It's pre-programming. Um, being a better person is actually recognizing the environment around you and how it fits in with your life and uh, things you want to do and things you want to see a change in. Schools are predominantly designed for people going into business or whatever. They're designed to be a better citizen. Citizens that do as they're told, listen to what the state says and often are completely brainwashed. Or it's an attempt to brainwash, should I say. This is an extension of that. A lot of multimedia now is controlled in such a way it's, it's actually farcical. Um, Facebook's thing relating to manipulation of the elections, for example, and whether it's the Brexit vote or US elections, is farcical. I remember reading an article about Mark Zuckerberg when he goes into meetings and his own laptop and stuff, he puts blue tack on the microphone and, and camera. Why is that guy so sensitive while he's telling everybody else to share all their information? Because he knows what he's doing, without a doubt. But he also knows what his competitors are doing. They're harvesting data. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up today is you don't have to entrust your entire life to this. Personally, I'd recommend putting it in a drawer at the weekend and just leaving it. Uh, unless you come on YouTube and watch my videos, then yeah, you should use it. <laughs> no, but... um. I find it's taking too much information. I find that I see AdSense adverts for things I've discussed in a room with the phone not even on, in the sense that it's, it's in sleep mode. And it's showing me adverts, like for example, uh, I'd like to buy a new mountain bike. It's listening to stuff like that. And it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be picking up any of that stuff. Um, and this is why there, there's a murder case in the US where um, the Amazon tube thing picked up the information to the murder, but it wasn't actually supposed to be in use, which is why Amazon didn't really want to give up the information because then people start to realize how much information is being gathered on a constant basis by inviting this technology into your house. Um, now, I'm not going to keep going on the technology side. I'm just saying be aware of this stuff. And a lot of time people will say, well, I've got nothing to hide or whatever. That is a prime example of media manipulation. The head of Google said something very similar. Because at the end of the day, they're selling you data. Of course they'll tell you that. What, you think they're going to tell you, yeah, you should keep yourself more private? Of course not. They're going to say, you've got nothing to hide, nothing to worry about. Come in, come in, give me your data. Um, but everything else can be manipulated as well and is manipulated. Health insurance I find quite bizarre where people are being way overcharged for medical services and I do question the legalities around some of it because I know the US is a different system and it, I know uh, I think it was Vention that brought this up the other day or there's another video he was talking about the cost of medical insurance because they'll charge you a small fortune for something that costs next to nothing in the US. In the UK we're getting charged the same as somebody that works for a living, what you find is somebody who pays for prescriptions, the medication can often be much, much cheaper than the prescription charge I'm paying. Why isn't that weighed up and said, Matt, you're actually paying for this anyway. The only reason you need a prescription is because it needs to be prescribed by a doctor, yet you've already paid the NHS system anyway. Um, maybe you shouldn't be charged above the rate of the medication because all the other charges are wavered anyway. Whether somebody's elderly, lifelong illness, drug addicts, whatever, they're not paying it anyway. But you do, and you're paying above the odds for something that you need. Why isn't it even debated? These are the sort of things that get back to conformity with schools. Um, 
a lot of the stuff around us tells us there's a certain process to everything. In reality, things like um, home rem remedies is quite common in the Philippines. A lot of people can't afford the medication. But the thing is, nobody ever really talked about the fact is a lot of them actually work. Um, this is why you'll see a lot of this debate stuff on the marijuana and how it uh, treats people with seizures and stuff. And you see this stuff appearing now related to autism and how it affects people. But until pharmacies decide, uh, sorry, that's unfair, pharma, pharma companies, not pharmacies, uh, can exploit that for their own benefit, they will always go against it. Um, they need to make money from it. And their argument being is, well, it costs lots of money to develop these drugs. How many drugs don't make a profit? That's all I'm asking on that. How many drugs don't make a profit? Because I'd estimate that I've never seen a pharmaceutical company go bankrupt. I don't know of any pharmaceutical company that's ever gone bankrupt. Maybe somebody can correct me on that. We are paying way too much for many things. A lot of stuff can be done with home remedies. A lot of stuff can be treated yourself. A lot of stuff does not require doctor intervention. Um, I think the UK system, there's a lot of issues around the hidden realities of inner city life, for example. A lot of the crimes are hidden. I was told by a senior officer at West Mercy Police, if you want to see what, the, what it's really like in Birmingham, go to A&E on a Friday night. Because we're talking about uh, crime-related incidents, etc., and what the true figures are, because a lot of it is not true in the media. A lot of the information is missing. They, they manipulate it. You know, at the end of the day, somebody could have been a murder, but they'll put that down as an ongoing investigation, so maybe it's not on the stats this year. And neither is a, a thousand more. Crime's down. Because there were ongoing investigations. There, is, there haven't been jail for it, so it's still ongoing. The only things that can skew that a little bit is things like the hospitals, where you have people with stabbing shootings and whatever, where they have to record it. But where do you get the information from? A lot of the information is not accessible, or a lot of people do not know where to find this information. It would actually give them real figures of the risks of inner city life. The same with burglaries and other things. A lot of stuff is not reported. And one of the things I will say, if you have a crime, doesn't matter how small it is, report it and get a crime number. Always ask for your crime number because it's reported then. It's now in this system. And it makes it much more difficult for them to say, oh, it crimes down this year. No, it's not. A lot of people have given up. I mean, a prime example of that was tire slashing and people running over cars in my street and kicking wing mirrors off. It got in the newspaper, there's about 200 cars that were damaged. How many crime numbers were reported? 200? Probably not. Because what you'll have is, I phoned them up, maybe three or four other neighbours, others went out there and just thought, what a bunch of twats. And at the end of the day, didn't bother reporting it, because at the end of the day, they know the police ain't going to do nothing anyway. In fact, we should have had the 200 reports that day. It would actually it would be increased the crime in that area significantly. Um, the environment we're in tells us we need to live a certain way as well. And this is another important bit. I talk about the cycle of death, but it's also the cycle of life. You leave home, you meet somebody, you move in together, you have kids. Debt, 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 debt. Because if you, if you stayed at your parents, bought your own home, got people living in there paying your rent, you paid the mortgage because you were working as well, how quickly could you pay that house off? Probably 10 years, not 25. Then you meet somebody and then move in there. Financially, you're in a better position. Mittal would say don't move anybody in. <laughs> but the point being is, I'm just saying from a different angle, if you went that way, you could actually see financially you'd be better off. You just save 15 years of your life paying the bank. There are many things in life like that. Get a credit card, put it off till tomorrow. Don't get a credit card at all. 
unless you're actually going to use it and can be trusted with it. Can you trust yourself with a credit card is the question. If you can't, don't get one. What a credit card should be used for is things that where you're using the insurance aspect of it and where you can gain interest. Because they do charge all the shops a merchant processing fee. They do charge them a significant amount for that meal you bought or whatever. Credit cards will actually, well, the good ones will actually allow you to get half a percent back or whatever. And somebody mentioned one percent on another card before. The point being is, that's what a credit card's for. And then you automatically transfer it before the 30 days is up. So you're constantly paying the thing off. You never have any interest paid out. It's all coming in. Um, the point being is, you shouldn't really need a credit card. And some people hold them for emergencies, and I would agree with that. But at the same time, recognize a Friday night uh, curry is not an emergency. The engine blowing on your car is an emergency. Um, they're very different things. You want to understand that these things are there to threaten your life financially and hinder your life and hold you back. They're not there for your personal development. They're there to actually hinder you moving forward if you start going backwards with costs related to debt. You want to try and keep debt free as much as possible. If you're going into a business enterprise, I can understand taking on a large loan or whatever, but at the same time, one of your fundamental things should be getting rid of that loan because it will eat into your profits, it will eat into everything. You want to try and get rid of that as fast as possible. Get yourself debt free. Um, a lot of the stuff we're told is completely manipulated. The banks often push things as being a savior being a helping hand in family life. No, they're actually the guys that lock you into that cycle of debt. Recognize it, recognize what they're offering, recognize you don't have to be with one bank. Double check with everybody else, get other pricing. Use websites like Money Supermarket. Analyze everything you get. Everything, it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, even with parking tickets, a lot of parking tickets aren't even legal uh, in the UK. I'm not sure about the US side, because I've never had any issues when I was over in the US. Um, but the, the point being is a lot of the stuff, they tell you this is law, this is this, and in fact it's not. A lot of stuff is not. Um, but I'll cut that one off there. It's just to say, recognize and analyze everything around you. Recognize a lot of stuff is just fake. A lot of companies have policies for this, that and the other, yet yeah, you know the directors and whatever are not following any of it. They just project it and stick it in their monthly magazine, that's what they assume is all they have to do. They don't have to live by it. Thanks for watching.